Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I focus on everything luxury, fashion, and beauty. I'm currently in New York City and I have a lot of exciting contents coming up. So please make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out. Today I am going to take you to the Metropolitan Museum to check out the Couture Fashion Exhibit showcasing the most beautiful dresses ever created. For those of you that are not familiar with the Met, it is like the Louvre to Paris, which is part of the core identity of New York City. Almost every movie that took place in this city has a scene of this iconic museum. Met Gala, the most followed fashion event, also takes place here, where celebrities dress up in glamorous outfits to showcase their unique styles. The theme for this year's Met Gala is the Garden of Time, which brought out a lot of beautiful floral dresses and is a perfect celebration for the spring. The Costume Institute collaborates with the Met every year after the Met Gala to bring out mind-blowing exhibitions featuring iconic fashion styles. This year's exhibition, known as Sleeping Beauties, echoes the garden theme of the Met Gala and incorporates modern technology to reactivate sensory capabilities from different dimensions. The exhibit features masterpieces from top fashion designers like Christian Dior, Chanel, uh, Alexander McQueen, and so on. And the exhibition brought back vintage gowns as well worn by famous people in the past. There are also artificial intelligence and computer-generated imagery to simulate the 3D image of those vintage dresses. This exhibition features around 220 garments and accessories spanning from four centuries, all visually connected through the theme of nature, and all of them are part of the Med's permanent collection. When an item of clothing enters the Costume Institute's collection, its status is changed forever. What was once a vital part of a person's life is now a motionless artwork that can no longer be worn or hurt, touched, or smelled. What's new about this year's exhibition is, as the name suggests, to reawaken the garments through computer-generated animations, scents, and touch. So without any further ado, let's head inside. As soon as you enter the exhibit, you're welcomed by an array of stunning vintage dresses from centuries ago. The first dress on display was designed by Charles Frederick Worth in 1887, who was an English fashion designer and founder of the House of Worth, which is one of the foremost uh, fashion houses of the 19th and early 20th centuries. He's considered by many fashion historians to be the father of haute couture. Worth is also credited with revolutionizing the business of fashion. His works were admired by royalties and were archived in world's most famous museums. Some of those dresses were made before the United States became a country. It is hard to believe that craftsmanship was so refined back then. And there are modern recreations of vintage styles using digital printing technology, which is equally interesting.
Given the theme of the exhibit, it is not surprising that floral patterns are repeated over and over again. From poppies to roses, the exhibit gathers a wide range of possibilities. Check out this Dior dress inspired by roses. It has the classic A-line silhouette that Dior is famous for, but it is slightly more modern given the one-shoulder design. Visitors to the exhibit are also invited to smell the aromatic histories of hats bearing floral motifs, to touch the walls of galleries that will be embossed with the embroidery of select garments, and to experience the fragrance that's unique to the patterns that are being designed onto the dresses. Check out this vintage Yves Saint Laurent sequin jacket. It is such a piece of art. And speaking of art, how about having Van Gogh's sunflowers on your dress? By the way, in case you are wondering why the exhibit is called Sleeping Beauties, it is because some of the garments have such a long history that they cannot be dressed on mannequins anymore due to their extreme fragility. This exhibit also has some of the newest creations by top fashion designers, such as this dramatic floral dress from Marnie. In my view, this looks more like a sculpture than a dress. This dress is made with white cotton canvas, digitally printed with polychrome roses, morning glories, tulips, petunias, poppies, and orchids. It's like a floral carnival bouquet. I am a big Dior fan. Their dresses always remind me of fairy tales. This particular dress does not have the most eye-grabbing colors, but it is definitely a showstopper with its elegant shape and sophistication. Check out these two outfits created by the House of Chanel. This evening dress was made for the Autumn Winter 2006 collection by the legendary designer Carl Lagerfeld. The dress was made with white silk embroidered with polychrome sequins and crystals. The house's signature camellia flowers were highlighted using gold silk and metal threads. Now let's move into the more edgy part of this exhibition, which is inspired by insects. I admire those artists' ability to turn insects into art, but I personally have a lot of fear toward bugs, so this is not my favorite part of the collection. This butterfly dress is breathtaking though, I have to say, it is probably my favorite piece in the entire show. Each individual butterfly on this dress was made using turkey feather and was hand dyed to resemble the real butterfly. I wonder how long it took to make this dress.
other than butterfly, another animal that oftentimes inspire designers is birds. This necklace was inspired by Oscar Wilde's novel The Nightingale and the Rose, which is the story of a bird sacrificing itself to help a boy seek love. Now let's move into the more ocean-inspired creations. Isn't this dress made of seashells one of a kind? It also makes noises, so whoever wears this dress would never get missed in a crowd. A seashell dress may not be very functional for an average Joe like you and me, but I can definitely make the seashell purse work in my closet. It can be a very cool accessory for the beach or a vacation. Ocean may be joyful for some people, but it could also represent darkness for those others whose livelihood depend on it. Sometimes dangerous and unpredictable, these outfits capture a different perception of ocean than what most people may think. Those two dresses have ripple patterns throughout, showing the ocean design in a very subtle way. I love this strapless black dress with ocean wave design. What do you guys think? Check out this sparkling mermaid dress. I love it how the designer used different fabrics throughout the outfit to bring the idea to life. Are you guys ready for the grand finale? Let's check out what's waiting for us at the end of the gallery. My friends, this is the muse of our show today, which is a mermaid dress designed in the 1930s for the wedding of New York socialite Natalie Potter. Given the backdrop of the Great Depression, this dress uh, was made to embrace simplicity and elegance, or what we call quiet fashion these days. However, it is by no means a low budget production. With its cathedral-length train, this dramatic example of a French couture wedding gown illustrates exceptional craftsmanship. The scallops on the train, very subtle but is a signature of the design house. The treatment gives the effect of rippling water, which is also inspired by Japanese landscape. So this is a wrap my friends. I hope that you enjoy the vlog today. It was an eye-opening experience and I really enjoyed the exhibit. Please let me know your thoughts and which gown is your favorite. I also have a video coming up showing you the rest of the museum. So if you're interested, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for your support and looking forward to seeing you next time.